World War III is over. Someday we're gonna be able to say that, but today, unfortunately, is not that day. Today, we're in the opening stages of the conflict, and the big question is, what is it gonna to take to get us from today to that future day when people are finally tired of the killing? Everything that has a beginning has an end, and this conflict too will have an end once people have grown weary of the loss and the bloodshed. But what does it take? What do we have to go through together as a species, collectively, to remember that all of our lives are better when they're lived in peace versus violence? In this video, that's what we're talking about. This conflict has already seen its beginning and we're entering into those middle phases. But the big question, the important question, is when is it going to end? I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and congratulations if you've made it this deep into the video. Most people don't. I know it's been a long video so far, and a lot of what I've been talking about is the topic of being anti-violence, anti-war, anti-killing, and I know that that's an unpopular sentiment today, or at least it's about to be. How do I know that? Well, unfortunately, these conflict cycles are very predictable, and they always run through the same course. With the United States, usually we put ourselves in harm's way in some way, allow ourselves to absorb a couple of blows, declare ourselves a victim, and then launch a full-scale attack against whatever country we had some interest in getting into a conflict with. And getting into a conflict is a very interesting proposition to the people who are in power in the United States right now. For a variety of reasons, I'm not going to list right here. I'm sure you can imagine quite a few of them. It is 2024 after all, and 2024 here in the United States is a multiple of four, if you know what I'm talking about. So now is a very popular, very advantageous time to start a real large conflict. In order to get people behind that conflict, we're gonna see a lot of propaganda rolling out. There are thousands of US service men and women who today, right now, are alive, who several years from now will not be alive. And it is seen as very unpatriotic to suggest that maybe it would be better if those people weren't killed. Maybe it would be better if they weren't put into a position where they lost their lives. Last week, there were three servicemen and women who lost their lives, quote unquote, words of the administration, for the administration. They did some cleanup on that after the fact, but that was a Freudian slip that I think, you know, displays why those people were put in that situation. And I, my heart goes out to the families, you know, those people, I, you know, I don't know their individual circumstances, but they all had families, they had parents, siblings, children, and, you know, those families have lost a loved one. And that's three families right now. There are thousands of families right now who have a service men, man or woman uh, that they care about, that they love, that is their, their, their parent, that is their child, that is their spouse. And that person is alive today and they won't be alive in, over the next couple of years because of the conflict that is coming up right now. I question whether or not it is worth it. What are we going to achieve? Let's look back at some of the, the recent conflicts that we've been in. Afghanistan, uh, you know, the last largest conflict that we were in, uh, you know, over the past couple of decades. Uh, you know, we went into a situation where the Taliban were in control. Uh, we dumped a bunch of servicemen and women uh, into that situation. Thousands of people, uh, you know, Americans lost their lives. Tens or hundreds of thousands of Afghani people lost their lives. And that was in order to get us to transition from the Taliban being in control of Afghanistan to the Taliban being in control of Afghanistan. Was all the loss of life worth it? There's a saying oftentimes that we use here in the West anyway, that, well, you know what? You gotta do something. You've got to do something. And it's stated as though that, that that's a self-evident fact, that if something happens, you have to do something to respond to it. What that phrase doesn't say is, well, you've got to do something positive. You've got to do something productive. You've got to do something that will make things better. That statement doesn't have that suggestion in there at all. It's just you've got to do something. Whether that makes the situation worse, whether that brings you from the Taliban in Afghanistan to the Taliban in Afghanistan, that statement that you've got to do something is directionless. It suggests just the idea that movement for movement's sake, action for action's sake, uh, is virtuous, you know, independent of what that action creates. We're in a situation right now where increasingly that sentiment is going to be pulled out. You've got to do something because 
some event has happened, and I would argue a lot of these events that happen are events that are kind of set up in that way. You set bowling pins up at the end of a bowling lane and they get hit with a bowling ball. You can't act surprised over that result, and the solution to that isn't necessarily setting up more bowling pins. And yet, so frequently, that is what we do. And does it make our lives any better? Does it put the world in any kind of a better situation? Is it better to go from the Taliban controlling Afghanistan with a lot of people alive to the Taliban controlling Afghanistan with a lot of people dead? Is there an improvement in that situation? And again, I know that the backlash in this video is going to be, well, you've got to do something. Well, you can believe that or not. Oftentimes, inaction can be much more powerful than action. And I, I think we see that a lot with the countries that are rising in the East, China in particular. We're talking about China here. China is wonderful at withholding action as a way of getting towards the, the end that they want to get to. China realizes that you don't have to do something. You can wait. You can bide your time. You can work in other ways, ways that aren't so obvious. And oftentimes you get much better results in that way. But it doesn't make much of a show. And here in the West, what we need right now, what our administration needs, what the people in power need, is a show. So over the next couple months, you're going to see us do something. Things are going to get done. Things are going to be done. Is that going to make our situation better? Is that going to make the world better? Is that going to make the lives of the family members of all the people that are about to die better? You can answer that question, but I think a better question to ask is, how can we respond to the events of today in order to set up for a better tomorrow for ourselves, for the people in this country? And you know what? Why not for the people around the world who are not Americans as well? We have a famous American from our history. He's not very well liked or respected anymore. He had these kind of fringy ideas, crazy ideas about uh, the virtue of not judging people by the color of their skin so much as the content of their character. Uh, you know, crazy ideas. We don't believe in that kind of stuff here anymore. Um, his name is Martin Luther King, and he had another famous idea that I can't be who I ought to be. You can't be who you ought to be until everyone has the opportunity to be who they ought to be. And that is a wonderful approach. If you believe in those kind of crazy fringe theories, that is a wonderful approach to living in a more peaceful world. The idea of sharing the wealth with people around us. And I know those kind of ideas, especially when we're heading into conflict, are not popular ideas because we're fighting over the scraps at this point. We've got more people living on the planet than have ever lived before. We have fewer resources on the planet than there have ever been before because we've been using so many of them up. And the only way that we're going to be able to live in peace with each other is if we can learn to live in peace with each other. Otherwise, this conflict could never end. This could be the conflict that finishes humans on this planet if it is the conflict over the ultimate final dwindling of our resources. So we have an opportunity now. What are we going to do? You got to do something. Are we going to take action? Are we going to make a big show? Are we going to go from the Taliban plus a lot of people alive to the Taliban minus a lot of people alive? What are we going to do? You got to do something. What are we going to do? The choice is up to us. Because the only way that these conflicts happen is if there is enough public support behind them. Why is propaganda made? Propaganda is created because politicians know they can't do this kind of stuff without public support. I mean, are you kidding me? Can you imagine some of the conflicts that we've been fighting over the past several decades? Taliban to the Taliban. Can you imagine selling that to the American people without propaganda? without the idea that if you don't support this, you're not American. If you don't support the sacrificing of our soldiers, you don't support the soldiers. Can you imagine politicians selling those kind of ideas without propaganda? They know they need us to buy into it. If we don't buy into it, there's no gas in their tank. So we have ultimate control. That's the good news. The bad news is propaganda is very effective, and we're going to get to see that over the next couple months. When we're convinced all over again, to go from the Taliban to the Taliban, plus a bunch of dead Americans. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.